Well, for more, we can speak to our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Armin, uh, this announcement really means uh, it's, it's not, they're pulling out of Mali, but they're redeploying elsewhere. So this is a sort of shift in strategy. That's right. So the, the we've had the confirmation now that the troops that will leave Mali will go uh, to uh, Niger. Uh, the um, uh, that th this came from from the French government uh, this morning. That the Niger has agreed to host European. Uh, forces after that withdrawal. Um, now, just to explain the bigger strategic shift here, uh, Will, you can see in blue here are the G5 Sahel countries. This was the a group that was originally set up a few years ago to try and focus on uh, efforts against the jihadists, Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Chad, and Burkina Faso. And they were particularly focused on this area here, the three frontier zone, as it's known, between Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. But the problem is that increasing political instability within the member states of the G5 Sahel have arguably hampered those efforts, anti-terrorist efforts within the G5, also hampering those efforts, obviously, the increasingly bad relations between Paris and Bamako and between the EU and Bamako, so between uh, the Malian government, the Malian junta, and the French and the EU. So as a, a result of the, all this, there's been a shift in thinking to try and help these countries more here, Ivory Coast, Ghana and Benin, these countries we have in green uh, that are suffering a spillover effect, particularly areas such as in northern Benin, northern Ghana, northern Ivory Coast, where inevitably there's a spillover of instability uh, from this Sahel zone further north. And that is very much what uh, today's proceedings were about. It's about how countries like Ghana, Ivory Coast, uh, Togo, Benin, and so forth can uh, try to implement uh, joint military efforts. That's already actually started under something called the Ghana Initiative, which was launched a while back ago. And now uh, also uh, an attempt by France and the EU to refocus its efforts to provide military and technical support to those countries uh, like Ghana and Senegal as well, which uh, was today uh, represented by Macky Sall. Uh, it's no coincidence that uh, the presidents of Senegal and Ghana stood next to Emmanuel Macron and the uh, 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 EU uh, the head of council, the EU council, yeah. the EU council, because those two countries are seen by the Europeans as kind of models of democratic stability and a big contrast to Burkina Faso and Burkina Faso and Mali, whose governments were not represented, were notably absent in Paris last night and this morning. So the idea, this kept coming out in the press conference this morning, this notion of shared values. Uh, Macron said it, the president of Ghana said it, Macky Sall said it, that ultimately only partners can work together if they share the same goals and values, and that includes things like uh, democracy, uh, stability, and effective democratic transitions. So uh, this is what I think this new partnership, if we can call it that, is going to be based on, plus, as I said, uh, the technical and military support uh, from France and the EU, EU to help countries like Ghana uh, because of this infiltration from further north that I mentioned. And, and then that idea of shared values all the more uh, uh, dramatic when we talk about, we used to see images of people in Burkina Faso or Mali waving the French flag. Now we see yeah. images of them burning it. Did, did this anti-French sentiment factor into this decision? Well, I'm sure that was a part of France's thinking, you know, the fact that, that uh, French forces uh, didn't feel particularly welcome. But um, it has to be said, when you mentioned, you know, protests that were, you know, against the French government, I, I maybe I would distinguish against the French government and anti-French, because it's not quite the same thing. But anyway, uh, those were actually part of the Malian street protests, protests against the ECOWAS sanctions. So the junta was, in a sense, using uh, those uh, the, the, the sanctions to further 
raise the temperature against France in a sense, but the real backdrop was that it was ECOWAS that imposed harsh sanctions on Mali when Mali went back on its democratic transition and, and the junta's uh, pledges when it reneged on those things. So I think uh, France, of course, was was uh, felt, I'm sure, very, you know, angry and sad about, the, the, the you know, the protests and the sort of... The, the burning of the French flags and so forth, but ultimately it was the regional bodies, uh, the AU and particularly ECOWAS, that came down on Mali uh, because of the coup within a coup. And that's something that France has always pointed to, that it doesn't want to be seen as being alone in this entire story, but rather it should be a regional approach to democracy, stability, development and all those other things. All right, Armin, thank you very much. Our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian.